Hello again, YouTube. This is The Truth Man. The channel is the No Matrix, No Simping, All Subjects channel. And on this one, we getting back to another series I created about things that pastors and church people focus on that the Most High does not care that much about. And on this one, we're going to talk about movies and music. Now, my grandmother was was more than likely one of the most loving, caring, religious people, fruit of the spirit bearing person that I ever seen. But she loved them horror movies, boy. That's where my mother got it from. That's where my aunties got it from. My grandmother would sit up in that dark room watching them horror movies and it and enjoying herself, watching uh, movies and, and shows where they don't do nothing but fight. But when it came to who she was in the most high, she was faithful. She was consistent. And I always wondered about that as a kid because it was a church of God in Christ church, like right on the corner by her house that she never attended. The only time she ever, uh, had us any way involved in that church is that day. I wasn't there. I don't know what I was doing, but my sister, my cousins, they had like a, a documentary, like a, a special presentation on hell. Scared all of them half to death. I wasn't there. No, I don't know where I was. That's the only time she even mentioned that church that was like right across the alley from her house. So, I used to always wonder, like, why? But as I got older, like, and I got to start dealing with church and the Bible myself, I start understanding why. And it's weird because I never really saw anybody come in or out of that church. It was right there on 26th and Hour um, here in Milwaukee. And it was a Church of God in Christ Church. And it was there for ages. We was little, like young. Right there. But my grandmother chose to go to a Luther church. I think it was that time she needed a little help. I don't know if she went to that church and they didn't help her. But the Luther church helped her and she became a member there and was a, the most faithful member. Every meeting, she was right there. We had a guy in there. We called him Mr. Talk Too Much. Like me and my cousins, we called him Mr. Talk Too Much because every meeting where he was there would be like long because he would always be talking. So the whole time in my mind, I was wondering about that. But as I got older, for a while, I stopped watching um, horror movies. Like when I went through my little phase of going to some of those sanctimonious churches, I did. I stopped watching horror movies. I wasn't watching a lot of violence in those first couple years. But as, as I began to keep reading the scripture, I saw more and more violence. And I was like, Looking at it like the most high is loving, but he's violent too. He's not to be played with. So that was the understanding I was pulling from the scripture. Like the most high is violent. Like he's a loving, he's like a perfect balance of a person. Like he, he was only violent at certain times, but yet he was loving and merciful and wanted the best for everyone. So... I started looking at these pastors and it's like I wasn't seeing what I was seeing in the scripture out of the majority of them, out of nearly all of them. I see a God that anybody can approach no matter what their status is, no matter what their physicalities are, no matter what their vulnerabilities are. He would accept anybody that would accept him. And so I'm looking at this and then I'm looking at people and I'm looking at people who claim to be religious 
Like I know one guy that claimed to be so religious, but yet he stopped talking to me over politics. And that point on, I didn't believe in nothing, nothing he was saying because he started acting different towards me because he was a devout Democrat and I was conservative. So he started looking at me different. I'm like, man, I ain't trying to hear nothing about deal religion. Funny acting. Wasn't what, trying to keep in touch. Nothing. I said, I ain't trying to hear nothing about dual religion. I don't believe in it. I used to think he was real till I start noticing little stuff he was doing. So, but then I start looking at the stuff that people say and the actualities in it all. I went to see Halloween kills and Halloween ends because I grew up with Michael Myers. I told you, we grew up, we used to get three cars deep to go see Freddy Krueger. Like, we went to see all the kids on my block. My parents, my auntie, or not my father, he ain't like horror movie. My mother, my aunties, the kids. We all went to see, and we was lapped up. In the 80s, we used to lap up in cars. We all went to see a double feature, Nightmare on Elm Street. When part two came out, they showed part one again. So, part one was free for all the people that they wanted you to understand what was going on in part two. So, we grew up watching Freddy Krueger. We grew up watching Sleepaway Camp. We grew up watching all them horror movies, Silent Night, Deadly Night, all the low-budget horror movies, right? We watched all of it. Nobody ever tried to do it. And I just watched Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends nothing like it didn't change me it didn't move me at all other than i just wanted to see how they was going to play out michael myers and me personally if you want to know my take on the last halloween i don't believe michael myers is dead i believe once they find a buyer for the movie they're going to bring him back and as once again he probably put somebody in this place because they thought he was dead on four with the little girl but he actually put the costume on somebody else. You say, well, why are you watching that stuff? Because I can. You got any more questions? Okay, let's talk about you. What do you do? Because I know you're doing something. Whether you Pentecostal, whether you Assemblies of God, whether you Church of God in Christ, I know y'all doing something because y'all ain't even all that nice. And being nice is one of the most important things. I remember it was this church on my block on 19th and Hampton. And I know the family because they used to live next door to me. Once again, Church of God cry. He never tried to talk to us about the Bible or anything. Like, watch this. Watch this. I'm going somewhere with this. So one of the most heartbreaking things I ever had to experience in my life was when my two best friends were forced to move because he bought their houses so he can expand his church. Those were like, yeah, we grew up, you know, you had what they call HPT, but like it was like we was on Hampton before any of that, before we created any of that. But originally it was like me a couple other people, I ain't gonna put their names out there on uh, YouTube. But then it was my two best friends. Like I was, we was all like close, like when we was little. But my two best friends on the block was a kid named Kenny and a kid named Edward. And that church bought their house so that they can expand. And a lot of them people at that church, like other than it was this one guy, like his son was real, real cool, real nice. But let him tell it, his son wasn't like spiritual. His son was real nice. So I asked him about his son some years later. All I said was, so how, how, um, 
John doing? Like, is he into the Bible? Is he in the church and stuff like that? He said, are you? So I looked at him like, dude, why, why would he even come at me like that, man? I'm just asking about it. Me personally, man, I'm going to tell you. I don't buy into none of that. I'm saved. I'm Bible this. Show me. If I know you, I don't want to hear how saved you are. I want you to show me. And I want you to help me get better as a person because you're such a good person. But he was like, are you? So I looked at him like, why would he even, I says, I'm thinking in my mind, see, this is why I'm not a member at these churches. It just seemed like it's a waste of time. Like, like in the church, it's a lot of real people, but a lot of the real people ain't preaching. They just there. Like the ones who really are into the most high and this, that, and the other, a lot of them, they not preaching. They just part of in attendance. That's why I, my attitude is I'm open for fellowship for anybody, just not at them churches, because them churches remind me too much of high school. Just like how he with that. And then the other one, and they they related. Them two related. The one I told you to stop dealing with me over them politics. Him and the RU are related. And nothing against either one of them, but just, just wasn't right, man. Wasn't right. So, all of this stuff is showing me movies really don't matter all that much, and neither does music, because guess what? I still listen to trash every now and then. Y'all notice how I be telling y'all stuff? I be keeping it transparent, because I know y'all can't judge me. All y'all could do is unsubscribe or subscribe, send support or don't send support. Because I know people don't like people that's real anyway, and I also know that everything I do, the most I see me. So if I'm going to worry about anybody, I'm going to worry about what he think, not y'all. Because he's the one that can condemn me and keep me out of his glorious kingdom. Not anybody down here. All these people, and most of them, they just don't want to serve God themselves, so they look for fault in other people. That ain't what I do. That's not what I do. That's not what I do. What y'all hear me saying about the church, just understand that I was in the church for years. Years. And it didn't take a whole long time for me to see this ain't for me. Like, I want the most high that I'm reading about, but this right here, how they, they, nah. Clicky. Them dudes be flirting with each other's wives. It's just all type of stuff. And then they used to get mad at uh, my wife because she real light skinned and had on that red lipstick. I'm like, man, for one, why are you looking at her? It's bothering you because you're looking at her. So, they always trying to install this little stuff instead of doing it at night when I'm asleep. Like, that's make me think something on my phone. So... I'm looking at it like movies or music don't matter that much. It don't. And I'm going to show you another way. People say, well, I just listen to gospel. Man, some of them dudes were. That's <laughs> all I'm going to say. Doing all kind of stuff. Some of the best gospel singers, they say was like, they. I ain't going to name names. I ain't going to do them like that because some of them passed away. But. A particular female gospel singer, they say she was mean as a rattlesnake. And she was one of the best. Like, I'll play her song to this day and just feel like power. Say, I don't listen to nothing but gospel music. Man, come on, man. You know I used to say that. I used to say that, too. 
I did. Then I start seeing how those songs didn't really have no effect on me and how I think. Like a lot of rap music, it'd be funny to me. Like some of the stuff they say with nice beats. Like Migos, Migos, they, had, I would say they, to me, they had a couple catchy songs. But like, like some of the stuff they be saying, it, it just be like over here. It don't make me want to go do no dirt. Don't none of them songs make me want to do dirt. And some of the rappers, I, hey, if you saw my playlist, you would think I wasn't even saying. Now, I don't keep nothing on there where they twerking and all that. But you would, <laughs> listen. Trust me, man. You be around me and you be around these people. Let's say you was around me. And I said, I'm going to be my complete self around you. And then the people who act like they so righteous, so holy, so sad, you got to sneak on them and watch them on the sneak tip. I guarantee you, you will be like, man, you way more righteous than them. You way more genuine than them, than a lot of them. I noticed in the, being in the church, being a member at them churches, that the ones that claim to be the most holy be the most unholy sometimes. Because the ones that really is living that righteous, uh, not doing nothing type of life, they ain't gonna, they ain't gonna like brag about it. And then one of the things that mainly really showed me this was when we did a couples tag team in the church I was at. Church of God in Christ Church, right? We did a couples tag team. Now, mind it, we was excited about it. Like, we wasn't thinking about making a name for ourselves or nothing. We just was glad that they included us, right? So, my wife went and tagged off to me. And when I went, like, some of the people that was quiet normally was standing up clapping shouting so on and so forth because I preach a little different than I talk on YouTube I'm just going to tell you so if you ever like if I'm ever on stage preaching just understand that it's going to be a little different I ain't going to be like them exactly but maybe in some ways you might think my preaching is different I'm just going to tell you so if you ever catch me in person you already understand this. But his sister, the pastor's sister, got to Shabaka. And her nephews were looking like they was looking funny. They was looking like she never do that when we talk. Because they went before us. We went last. And so after that, everything became a competition. Couldn't even give a testimony. Without these same little three dudes getting up. And then everything I said in Sunday school after that, it was even the pastor came in the doorway like this one day. Because they was telling them stuff we were saying. I know the Christian doctrine forwards and backwards. I know some of, some of it to this day I hold to, I believe. A lot of it. But some of it, I'm just going to tell you. I'm just going to tell you. So when I start realizing this stuff, I start looking at it like, the Most High don't really care about movies or music or any of that stuff. Because if you his, yeah, it, your mind could get kind of unraveled if you... If you trying to indulge the flesh too much, your mind will start going elsewhere. So you you gotta be you gotta have self control. You gotta utilize the self control of the, of the spirit of the God. But I start noticing that it's not what they saying though. Cause I know people that say they don't even play spades. 
Man, I'll bust some spades. I want a business work. Well, never mind. I ain't gonna tell you my business I did. I play dominoes, I play spades, and you know what I'll be doing? What? What are people who don't want to live right? All right, he drunk off one little beer. A 280-some pound man is drunk off one beer. If you don't want to serve God, don't serve him. He don't need you. But what people do is they want to stretch everything because they don't want to serve God. Either they don't want to believe in him, they want they in their feelings. You know, some people just want to be depressed. So they don't want to believe, they don't want to follow the Bible. That's you. So they so they want to talk behind your back like you ain't who you say you are. Some of which because they want to be over you. Like I people still to this day, I be looking at them. They try to talk down to you. Look, man, you ain't on my level. You ain't on my level. A lot of these dudes try to talk down to you. They can't even keep their wing ding in their pen. I have fought like cats and dogs and still never went laid with some woman that I'm not married to. Now, I believe, like, my beliefs have been more advanced towards what they was doing in the Bible as of late, as of, like, the last three, four, five years. But some of these dudes, these dudes go to church but asleep with anybody's wife in the church. And those same guys don't drink or smoke. Those same guys are trying to condemn you for the smallest stuff. That's why I don't get off in the people. I'm off in the, the most high. Nothing against people. Like, depending on them, I'm a person that I'm open to friendship. I'm open to relationship. But ain't no any old body gonna just sneak in on me. You're not gonna just sneak in on me like, like I'm gullible or some stuff. Some people be guard tight. If your guard is super duper tight, I know you ain't all that spiritual. Because if you were spiritual, you could have your guard up deflecting, but yet enough, open enough to shake somebody's hand in friendship and become friend, friends with a person that's loyal to you. If you like no friends, I'm, I'm this. Uh, look, I don't believe in your spirituality, man. Because if you had God like you say, you would be able to discern more than that. So, movies, music, you, if you try to listen to all gospel, it's like, I mean, that's you, that's fine. But it's not any special credit from God doing it. It's just not. They say, well, I listen to gospel and I listen to some jazz. And that's fine. But when you start condemning other people for the music they listen to, now you're trying to play God because it ain't nothing about music in the Ten Commandments. It's rarely anything about music in the law other than we learn about David. You're making a big mistake trying to play God. You got to let people, the most high will reveal itself to those who seek him. Y'all be trying to be people's God and guess what be happening? Zoop, right back gone. So that's why I say music, movies, it's not as important to him as it is these preachers. These preachers be rainbow. But talking about they don't listen to rap music, they don't listen, they don't drink, they don't smoke. Okay, one of the main things that's gonna change about you when you really say, how you doing in that category? Man, I used to smash. I mean, the most high got in me, man. It was a battle because you know your flesh. That's going to be the biggest battle in your flesh is your sexuality. You 
if you ever had a lot of women just messing with women and stuff, don't tell them to take it away. Just figure out how to use the self-control. Because you want to do all that stuff with your wife. And if you one of them people, we, we're going to get into that too. That's going to be part of this series too. People who think they can only have sex a certain way. You was a freak earlier in your marriage. You start going to church. Now you want to be all Christian-y in the bed. You better keep slurping. You just better stop watching. What's her name? That Angie Ray chick used to talk about that. Get out of here with that. That's only for gullible believers. I'm trying to hear that, man. You don't tell me how to have sex in my bed. That's why they reject prophets, in case you was wondering. Because prophets, like a prophet is going to have the whole thing in his mind. The whole thing in his heart. The Most High will be giving it to the prophet because he expects you to come to the prophet and learn. The people going to these pastors who be like in these civic groups, I'm just going to call them. They using that church as a front like a drug dealer or use a job. But who's keeping score? Sometimes I keep score, sometimes I don't. But music, movies, hey listen man, whatever you want to do, do. In terms of whether or not what the Bible say about it. Have the proper understanding. Have the proper understanding. Because some things, the most high know you're going to do it. Like if you, okay, watch this, watch this. And I'm going to go somewhere that y'all probably ain't going to agree with. If you in a sexless marriage and y'all both claiming to be believers, the most high already know you're going to watch for them. A lot of guys gonna watch porn because they don't want to be labeled as a cheater, as an adulterer. So they want to get their little satisfaction off in secret. They do. If you notice, the guys in the Bible never suppress their sexual desire. David, Solomon, Samson. It's these little current little neat believers just trying to get people to suppress their desire. And some of them end up clapping like straight with their hands like this. I, hey, hey, I got to watch on what I say, man. Y'all just pay attention. Clapping with a straight back and straight hands. Because while you were trying to suppress your heterosexual sexual desire, Something else crept in on some of these dudes. So I'm not advising anybody to watch porn, but what I'm telling you is the we're going we're going to get into that. I would advise you to learn how to control yourself. If you got a woman around that's supposed to be getting down on you, get rid of her if she don't want to do it. Get as many women as you need and as you had the time to remain productive spiritually, mentally, socially, financially. That's how it really worked. But you let them, man, you're only supposed to have one wife. And that one wife ain't even having sex with you. You be just like this. Squish. You have, man, you're only supposed to have one wife. She get mad at you. She not doing nothing. You shouldn't even have to do that. Why get married if you still jagging? If you still now, if you just got a, a desire out the roof. But if you still jagging and you marry and it's because, OK, how often do you get it a month? I get it one time a month. Man, you're going to be jagging your tail. You're going to be watching porn left and right. Them, 
and them preaching on it ain't gonna stop you but we're gonna talk about that we're gonna talk about that next in this series we're gonna talk about that i keeps it real man So what I'm doing in this, in terms of my ministry, is I'm putting the puzzles together. Those of y'all that's following along, you're going to have the whole thing when it's all said and done. And you're going to be what a believer really is supposed to be. And one of those things is transparent. I hate fake believers. Well, I don't hate them, but y'all know what I mean. I, I don't like them like that. Where they try to act like they don't never think nothing wrong, never do nothing wrong. That's why a lot of men ain't in the church. You get a real masculine dude, watch how many men be in this church and the women gonna follow. They ain't finna be in no feminized church, man. All they gonna do is fight and argue with me, be going back and forth. I've been there, I've been through that already. You masculine, that's all they gonna do. If you ain't in a, like Pastor Dowell, I bet you, I bet you the guys in this church, they not even like that. They more transparent. Not saying he perfect, nobody's perfect. But I'm saying like, I see something in him that real masculine men is gonna be drawn to, man. And then when the woman gonna follow. They gonna follow. That's why I, I, I actually listen to him. I don't listen to a lot of preachers, but I actually listen to him. He keeps it real. Got guns. These pastors, man, I don't need no gun. God gonna protect me. And then they end up dead in situations where they still could have been alive. But I don't talk at length, y'all. It is 930. It's time for me to get going time for me to get going we'll be back one more video later on maybe a short stay tuned i want to want to thank all my new subscribers i want to thank all the people who encourage me in the comments all the people who challenge me in the comments i want to thank you too but my thing is if you're going to disagree with me and you're going to get disrespectful show your face that's all i ask Show your face, and if you're a big content creator, quit being a punk and go on your real account and disagree with me. That's all I ask. All I ask. But anyway, thanks for watching.